The conscious love motive, in its developed state, is the wish that the object should arrive at its own native perfection, regardless of the consequences to the lover. Take it, however, as the fundamental truth about love, that it always creates. Love created the world, and not all its works are beautiful. Take hold lightly, let go lightly. This is one of the great secrets of felicity in love. Often the first five minutes of the lover's first meeting are decisive of the whole future of the relations. Jealousy is the dragon in paradise, the hell of heaven, and the most bitter of emotions because associated with the sweetest. Scientists, fortunately, are not all as scientific as their science. It would almost seem that nature resents the attempt to observe her in oneself, so powerful and at the same time so subtle is the resistance commonly experienced. A man's verbal creed may have no real relation with the creed on which he acts. It is a very rare mind that believes what it does and does what it actually believes, but only in such a mind are thought, feeling, and action really one. Heroes and heroines are not measured either by what they passively endure or by what they actually achieve, but by the quantity and quality of the effort they put forth. Introspection is a form of lunacy. The mind is a dragon which will not answer questions clearly. It must be slain by making it answer clearly. Buddha, Pythagoras, Jesus Christ were practical workmen. Belief is a luxury. Only those who have real knowledge have a right to believe. Otherwise, belief is merely plausible opinion. Individuality is the consciousness of will. We fish in time's ever-rolling stream. What we catch is ours, but what we don't is gone. Nature, from one aspect, is the wicked stepmother of the fairy tales, beguiling us and using us for her own purposes, the evolution of substances. Nature is genius without common sense. Scientists are engaged in anatomizing the corpse of the universe. Ordinary scientist, one who possesses an assortment of information not verified by personal experience, and which is often disproved by another scientist. To discover not more and more things, but the truth or real relation of things, is what distinguishes men from the animals. Only he who has attempted to judge himself can have an idea of judging anyone else. True artists are the antenna of nature. Coming nature casts its artists before it. There is no such thing as an immortal work of art. There is one art, the greatest of all, the art of making a complete human being of oneself. Truth before God is essence. Truth before man is personality. Pity is divine. Self-pity, diabolical. Voluntary or intentional, suffering is the price of immortality. Vanity, 
that something for which we will sacrifice almost anything, rather than that it should be hurt. Pride, ignorant presumption that the qualities and status of the organism are due to merit. Superstition, an emotional attitude towards a lie. Sentimentality, a slight emotion exaggerated by muddled thinking. Do noble deeds and regret them all day long. Be a pianist, not a piano. The happy person is he who is striving to actualize his potentialities. Experiences are another form of food. From this point of view, it does not matter much what happens as how we take experiences. We should strive to do more and more, better and better, and think less and less about it. Feel with the brain, think with the heart, act practically. Formulate your feelings as well as your thoughts. All bad temper is only energy running to waste. The devil lives on our waste energy. Observe and notice as a matter of personal and scientific curiosity how your body manifests this, that or the other black mood. Boredom begins where our mind leaves off, and to be easily or quickly bored merely means that our intelligence is either small or very idle. Our only excuse for reading books about people is that we cannot read people themselves. If we can learn to express without feeling, we can learn to feel without expressing, which is the most important element in the art of not giving ourselves away. A man who can deny his muscles their habitual luxury of automatically acting his moods and emotions is on the road to the greatest powers. Exactly as in a dream, we take the most astonishing things in life for granted. It is obvious that seeing a thing whole is a first condition of seeing its parts in proportion. Do anything so that you intend to do it, but don't allow your mind to be done. It is notorious that sentimentalists do not feel intensely the situations immediately present. It is jam yesterday, jam tomorrow, but never jam today with them. The advantage from trying to recall the day exactly is inestimable. Memory, will, concentration, and the power of sustained attention are all brought into play. The important thing is to know what you like. If I can adopt any attitude I choose, that is, have an emotion I like, then anything, whatever that happens, is all the same to me. I can feel about it as I please. The clean, strong idea of life as a field exercise for the development of all our muscles, physical, emotional, and intellectual, has still the unspoiled quality of manly and womanly idealism.